Magic players and their collections continue to lose money. When will the bleeding stop? Good news or bad news, they can both be found in today's video. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here and thanks again for hanging out with me on my channel today. Guys, we have passed the 14,000 subscriber mark and thank you to each and every person out there who helped make it happen. We're now moving toward the 15,000 subscriber mark. I put it up on the board behind me and we will count that down as we go. We're 980 subs away and counting. Big shout out to all my regular viewers who tune in each and every day to give these videos thumbs up and leave comments in the comment section to my Patreon members as well as my YouTube membership members. Guys, let's keep this going. A Magic player with a high-end collection or a newcomer to Magic with a penny collection. Either way, it's your collection and you're seeing it lose value. Myself included, our values continue to be eroded by what's going on in the secondary market of Magic the Gathering and all the turmoil with Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. People, we basically have a pariah situation where no one really wants to touch stuff. And that is good news. That is good news for those people out there who are looking to buy some reserve list cards at a discount. This is the time. It isn't going to get much better than this. And as these prices continue to fall, I hope you're watching the cards you really want to get and keeping an eye on those. And for those of you who have large collections and you're worried about the damage that's being done and the value that's eroding, this will pass. It will get better. Things will stabilize and things will slowly turn around, but it takes time. Just like in a real stock market, things go up and things go down. And not all of this is Hasbro and Wizards fault. A lot of it is the inflation that's going on in the world, the recession that's being banded around everywhere. There's a lot going on that can affect your cards right now, that affects the value of assets like these. So they're in the downward trend right now. If you can afford to do so, this is just a time to batten down the hatches and hold on to your collection. I've warned people against selling collections, including some of my friends. Some will listen, some will not. They'll decide what's best for them. And for you guys out there looking to buy these cards and add positions to your collection, and you know the prices are good, I know we've been talking on the Discord as well as on email, I get it. And there are cards you really want to get and you're wondering when the bottom is going to be. Everyone has their own price point of where they think is a good price. That's the bottom for you. And it'll continue to move around up or down. But when you see previous highs, and you see how low some of these cards are, I can understand that inclination to want to go out and buy a dual land. Go out, get a Yawgmoth's Will, get a Gaia's Cradle, and I know some of you guys have done this already, and you saw the cards go down another 2 or 3%, you're like, hey, it's down like 60 bucks. Totally understandable, but you know what? You still bought at a price point that you found acceptable. So as players continue to lose money in collections and weaker hands start to fold, those people on solid footing will actually be gaining ground. I know some people in the penny stock area of Magic who are buying the low end reserve list are loving it right now, getting ready to just buy 100 cards of something for like a dollar a piece. It's 100 bucks, you get 100 copies. I get it, I understand it, and it's fun to do, and players who can afford to do so are gonna dive right in on that. Just like old chewing gum, you just wanna have a little bit more. Even though how bad it tastes, you want to get a little bit more and you have fun doing it. And then there's those middle ground reserve list cards. The Anvils of Bogarden, the ones that aren't great but aren't bad. They do have uses. They have play in Commander. Those kind of cards are the ones you really have to keep an eye on and see what's going on. You know, today's card watch video, I'll go over a whole selection of cards and give you some opinions on them. But guys, you all have your own personal lists out there. I know you do because I do as well. Hello, Arabian Nights. Where are you? Let those prices start to drop so Big Daddy Moxman can get his hands on some more. So let's get this video started. I can't wait to see what you guys think with your comments in the comment sections. And there are also those players out there who are laughing right now. They're the ones who just want these collections to go to zero because they think it should just be a card game. Guys, there's a whole gamut of player out there. And depending on where you fall and which side of the fence you're on, Either way, it's an interesting time in Magic. So let's get started in this card watch video. Let me show you some great cards on the reserve list and let me see those comments at the end. The first card I was getting a lot of questions about this week is Time Twister. This is an unlimited edition. 
and this is currently the only Power 9 card that is legal inside Commander. Now the market price is $3,200 US, but the average price is $9,599.50 US, and it's 5,500 euro to get this card into your house. It's around six to $7,000 Canadian, depending on where you're buying it and which condition it's in. But there are other options to a time twister. You can buy Echo of Aeons. Uh, you can go ahead and get yourself a time spiral from the Urza block. There are options available and because the people who own this card are not really in dire straits most of the time, they didn't leverage the house to buy this card. They didn't max out credit cards to buy it, and now they can't hold on to it. They've bought and paid for this card a very long time ago. People who generally own power cards um, can hold on to them long term. They don't really have to sell in most cases. But it's an amazing card to get your hands on. It will drop a little bit just because the whole market's pushing down, but don't expect a major shift in this card's price. Now our next card is Plateau, and as with a lot of the dual lands, they are seeing a bit of a downward trend after that M30 announcement with the proxy cards coming in. Um, but this card here, as with most of the dual lands, it's only falling a little bit. It's not being affected as much as other versions, but this is for a near mint version you're seeing on your screen right now. You have to understand, heavily played and moderately played copies have been more affected. And a lot of people have been buying these cards. I covered it last week in the Hot 10 video for the reserve list on Sunday, that cards like this were getting a lot of purchases, a lot more than is normal, and people were buying one or two at a time, which really lets me know that those were people buying for Commander. They were buying heavily played, moderately played. They were finally getting their hands on their first piece of a dual land. That's great for players who are looking to get their hands on it. Now, Pendril Miss. This is a lower end reserve list card. It has been as high as around that $40 mark. Um, it's never really recovered after that. It had its first real buyout in the, uh, the 2021 era. But when you look at this card, it does actually have uses and its price dropping right now is just making it more affordable for players who are in the penny stock, the low end reserve list cards who wanna get it. I'm very big on this card. I really enjoy it. I've used it in a couple of decks in Commander. Um, you can see here, we're talking less than $20 Canadian to buy this card right now. Um, the market price is $15.89 US, 11 euro, 44 cents to get this card to your house. Pendril Miss is a lot of fun. It's still gonna keep falling. It's not done yet. There's no rush to buy this card. It'll probably go around to the $10 level in the next few months if you wait long enough. Cards like this just don't have enough staying power right now unless they get played in some really heavy commander deck that brings them into like the, the spotlight, it's not really gonna be a big thing. Now our next card, Omen of Fire, same thing, low end reserve list card, and I have seen this used very effectively in commander decks. It can really mess people up and it's less than $5. That's why people like to buy it because it kind of was rising up to that like $14, $15 level. Again, another card that hasn't recovered. I own several play sets of this, I've held on to them. I'm gonna wait and see how things go out if you're going for any of these low end reserve list cards, guys, remember to go for near mint. Um, things like alliances, we had sleeves, but they were kind of like the wider sleeves. They're like the penny sleeves. Cards were still getting damaged all the time. They just didn't have the same protection. So cards like this, go for that near mint. It doesn't cost anything more. And in most cases, a lightly played and a near mint have very minimal differential in price. Now our next card is the Exorcist. This card is a good card, okay? It's from the dark. We're talking still, you know, an older set that has a lot of play behind it. The Exorcist being a two white cast and cost one one, but you can pay one white and one other to destroy a target black creature. That is awesome. With all the multicolored cards we're seeing out there, cards like this can be highly effective inside of multi-commander deck games. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So this is a card that as it falls, I'm keeping my own eye on this one just to see where it goes. I only have a couple of them. I'd love to finish a play set, but I'd love to see this card, you know, in the market value being 31. I'd love to see it come down to around 23, 24 for a near mint copy. I would probably look to see what the prices are at for moderate play just so I can finish a collection and save myself a few bucks. A great card. Another card from the dark, City of Shadows, was over the $200 mark. It is one of my favorite cards. I love using this inside my commander deck. It has a lot of play and the price just keeps going down. I actually try to buy one of these each and every month. I don't care if they're near mint or not, but around that $50 US mark is a very nice price tag to get your hands on a card like this. It can be put into any deck that has creatures 
And of course you can build up the mana supply to make it a very, very useful card later on. And if you happen to be buying any of these cards today you see in the video or just shopping on TCG Player in general, guys, please remember to use my TCG affiliate link found in the description of my videos. It'll be totally awesome if you can help me out. It gives a kickback to the channel, allowing me to buy cards, and I really appreciate it each and every month, guys. Thanks again. What a great card. City of Shadows, one of my all-time favorites. Now, for the next card here, we got Nova Pentacle, another card that I really enjoy and a card that's really been falling in price. This thing was around the $150 US mark. We're talking $59.90 US for a near mint. You don't have to buy near mint. This thing can be fun. Four casting cost generic. It's three and tap it. Redirect damage done to you from one source to a target creature of opponent's choice. But if you're playing in a deck that doesn't have creatures and you're starting to have to choose opponent's creatures, they're blowing up their own stuff, this can be a lot of fun in a commander game, making them pick off other stuff. Great card to have around. And again, when it gets this cheap and you're talking from Legends and its reserve list, cards going down like this just make them more affordable for players who have never had that opportunity. It's a very fun card to play with. Now our next card is Power Leech. I wanted to mention this one because it's gone through Biotes this year. When Brothers War was announced, we had the Power Leech really get a lot of attention. Okay, it got bought out. We knew there'd be artifacts coming in. We knew we'd probably see some play in the future. Two green, it's an enchantment. Gain one life whenever one of your opponent's artifacts becomes tapped or whenever the activation cost for an artifact is paid. Okay, but not for continuous artifacts like a Howling Mine. I, I get it. But guys, this card is totally coming back down to earth and it's going to continue to fall. Yes, there's been buyouts on the card, but the way the market is and the people who bought this out, they're probably not holding every single copy and it isn't going to see enough play right away. Even if it can be used in Commander, you're not going to see tons of stuff going on right now with this card. So expect to see this card drop in price in the near future. Our last card on the list today is Drop of Honey from Arabian Nights. As with a lot of other Arabian Nights cards, these ones are just starting to trend down now. The market price is still $891 US. It's still a very expensive card, but the trend is just starting. Cards like this will take a very long time to slowly drift down. People who like Arabian Nights cards, Legends cards, Alpha, Beta Unlimited should be paying attention to reserve list cards of this nature because a lot of them are slowly drifting, but some are like falling off a cliff. Low end reserve list cards are really plummeting down as the market just can't support what's happening out there. This kind of event is almost a once in a lifetime where Hasbro does something like this, Wizards does something like this, and then the world the way it is in the economic climate, it's just a bad time for everyone. But that means players, depending on where you are, you're either in a solid position where it doesn't really affect you, or you're able to buy cards you wanna get, but at the same time, if you make your cards low enough, they are going to sell because players out there are looking for a deal. So thanks a lot for tuning in today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Thanks again to all the fantastic patrons on this channel who allow this channel the ability to make the content it does each and every day for all the viewers. Thanks. 14,000 subscribers. Whew. Guys, thanks again for being here. Thanks for being those special people who make it to the end of these videos. First to the egg, first to the key. You guys comment every day. You're always there for me. My family and me want to say thank you to everyone out there. Thanks again for watching my videos. Thanks again for commenting and enjoying the content, having these conversations with me. It means a lot, guys. It really does. Have an awesome day today, each and every one of you.